Hello my friends, today we will be taking this image over here. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. The table we'll be using today is this table I purchased from Amazon, I think it was around $70, and this is a great table for product photography. The top it's 2 by 2 so it fits a lot of the um, you know, plexiglass you can buy and stuff. And then what I like about it, it is very sturdy, I think it's rated for 220 pounds. And on the bottom of the feet, it has those twisty things. So if your floor is uneven, you can lock it in at the correct height and you'll get no wiggle on your surface. For the background, I have a Savage seamless paper roll. This is a red color. I can't remember exactly which color it is, but I will put it all in the description below. And I chose red because, well, my drink is kind of that reddish pink tone. Now it is not the same exact tone, it's very, very close, but that's okay, we will change it in post to match perfectly. And um, you can use gray paper, you can use yellow paper, blue paper, whatever you want, because we will be changing it in post. So the one trick though, if you have something that is as close color as your product, then it makes it so much easier when we make a selection of the product. If your selection is not perfect, then it will not show as much because it's very, very close. So if you have a little bit that is a little bit more pink or red or whatever, it's not gonna make a big difference. I'll be shooting with my Sony 7R4, 90 millimeter macro lens, and I am Tether and Capture One. For the surface, I'll be using this um, piece of glass. I purchased this one on Amazon, and I think it's just supposed to be a shelf. I bought it, it came in a pack of two. I'll also put those in the description below. And this is going to be our surface. I'm gonna place it right here on the edge of my table. And you see it wants to tip, so I need to put some weight on it. For the weight, I'll just, first I'll put a, you know, cloth on it so it doesn't scratch my glass. And then I'll be using this weight that I use for my C-stands. This is a Manfrotto weight. I think it's 10 or 15 pounds. And that should do. So I want to have that shelf coming through my image. My glass is gonna be sitting something like that. Now, let's see. The way I like to work with my shots, I like to work my lights from the back to the front. So first we'll dial in the background, then we'll spray our can, we'll put some other lights, and we'll see what we get. So let me compose my shot. My can, it's a little bit twisted. I turn it like that, and let's see. That is looking pretty good. I'm gonna take a shot, and I don't have any lights on. We should get a completely black image. You know what, let me start my screen recording so you can see what I'm seeing on the computer. All right, black frame. We have no lights. So let's put the light on the background. For the light in the background, I'll be using a speed light. This is a Godox uh, 100. I'm going to turn it on. Let's see what power is on. It's on 116 power. I'm gonna put it right behind my drink, pointing at the background. What I'm looking for is a nice glow that is right behind the can. And let's see what we get. Turn on my trigger. Take a shot. And that is not bad. It's actually pretty good right out of the bat. We'll go with that one. What we need now, we need a light to illuminate our can. And for that, I'll bring in another AD100 from Godax. I love these little lights. And I'm just gonna place it pretty close, something like that. Turn it on. The power on this speed light, it's one quarter power. So let's see what we get with that. That is not bad. Uh, I wanna, the left side is too dark. Let's bring in a bounce card. And this is just testing. This photo doesn't, doesn't really matter right now because we need to put our water drop and stuff on it. Great. 
that is not bad. I might want to increase the power on the lights, but we'll put this aside for now and let's work on our can a little bit. For the can, I will be using water mixed with glycerin. And what this will do will make my water drops more round and also they will not evaporate so fast so they will last longer. I will place it right over there. And there is my drink. Make sure you label your liquids. This one I put a G on it so I know it's glycerin. I'm gonna shake it a little bit. Let's give it some good spritz. All right, that should be good. Now I have to pick it up carefully. I don't wanna remove some of those water drops and place it on my surface. That was awkward, all right. Now glycerin will leave a sticky kind of surface, so be careful with it. Um, I use it all the time on food photography. If you spray glycerin on your like tomatoes, let's say, or you know, fruits, it just makes for beautiful, beautiful images. Let's get our composition just right, since this is the image that counts. And also, I want to get some water drops just dripping from my glass surface. First, let's take a test shot. And I'll put, put my bounce card as well. Let's see. I think I'm going to place it like this. This bounce card is from V-flat. I will put that in the description below as well. All right. I think I'm a little bit too close. Like it just kind of, oh no, I'm zoomed in. There you go, oh yeah, that's good. All right, let's get some water dripping out of the, the glass. First thing I like to do is put, put the towel on the floor because I will be dripping water and that just makes cleanup so much easier. So I'll put a towel on the floor and then I'll get the water bottle Make sure I'm really focused on my product. All right, let's take another test shot first. I can feel my hands are already sticky from the glycerin. And now I will be spraying water All right, let's see how we do this. I want to make sure I'm catching some of those drips or that, as they're falling. And that is not good enough. Let's see. I think we're going to catch one. Come on, drip. It's looking better. All right, so after a few more tries, I got a few images with drips. I'm not sure. I think the easiest way for me to do this was just to hold the water bottle behind and kind of shoot forward and then try to catch it as it dripped. Now, that is looking great. You see, we got this drip over here. I like that. 
Now another thing I want to do is I want to experiment a little bit with the background, give me a little bit of variety in post. So what I will be using for that is a gobo. So I'll be using my AD200 and then I will use this MagMod gobos. It comes with this um, uh, lens like this. I'll put this in the description below. And then you see it has a gobo that goes over there. So let's just try that just for a different look, see what we get. Let's see, I'll take this thing off. And this, I'm just going to kind of point it at my background and let's take a shot. And that is not a lot of light on our background. So right now, I don't even know what I'm at, let's see. Right now I'm 32 power, I'm going to increase this to half a power. Let's see what we get now. And let's see if that will give us what we're looking for. And that is way, 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 way too much. So we need to take it down. Let's see, maybe an easier way is to lower it like this. So half a power, I'm gonna go to 116 power. And let's see, let's try this like this. All right, we might be using that, maybe not. It's kind of interesting. Um, let's see if I point it kind of straight at the background instead of from the side. That should give us a different look. If you have an idea, it's always good to just try it. Try it and then you decide when you go to the computer so right now, just kind of playing around, see what kind of looks I get. And then when I'm on post, I will decide what to do with it. Maybe I'll put it just a little bit higher and angle down a little bit more. We might even compose the two backgrounds together to make one. All right, we will leave it to that. Now let's go to the computer and finish our image. Now here we are, this is the images we took. And as you can see, I have more images here that you see me taking. And that's because I had to cut off a big chunk of the footage where I was just trying to get those drops. You see, I also tried to use uh, one of these dropplers and I kept missing and I was just not very successful on getting the drops I wanted them to. That one is not too bad over there. But uh, anyway, that's why I have so many images in here. I do like the image that we initially had, but you know, after looking at it on the computer, I decided the background was just a little bit too boring and I just decided not to go with that one. Instead, we will go with this one. It's just a little bit more interesting. So the image I will be editing is this one. And then I will be using this image over here just to steal these two drops. That's it. That's what we're getting from this image is the two drops. Now, I already went ahead and did some basic edits into Lightroom, just, you know, um, took the highlights a little bit down, up the shadows, add a little bit of uh, textures and clarity and vibrance and, you know, all that good stuff. Nothing really too crazy. Just a simple basic adjustments. And now we'll take this image and the one with the drops and we will go photo, edit and open as layers in Photoshop. Now here is our images in Photoshop. And as you can see, we have the base layer and the one with the drops. So let's take these drops and, you know, mask them up from this image. The easiest way to do this is just to go over here onto the, where is it over here? Object selection tool. And I will just draw a little square just around it. Photoshop will find it and select it as you can see. Hold down shift if you want to add to that selection and select the second one as well. And now we will have a very hard selection if we just put this on a different layer. So I will go into select, modify, and I will feather it a little bit. 
I'm just gonna give it a two pixel feather. I will say okay, and then command J to put it on its own layer. So now if I turn this layer off, you see we have the drops on its own layers. Uh, we might wanna feather it even more. You see we have kind of like a hard ring about it. So in order to make this selection out from this selection, I will hold down command, click on the layer with the two drops, and then select modify and feather. So let's go to five pixels and click OK. And then Command J. So turn, let's turn off the first drops. And now we have our drops are looking better. Great. Command zero to fit to screen. I'm going to delete this layer because I don't need it anymore. And in fact, I don't need this layer either because I already have the drops from it. So I'm just going to delete it. So now we have two layers, one, our base layer, and two is just the little drops. You see that before and after. Things are looking great. Looking at this image, there are a few things I, I want to do. One, I want to brighten this white part over here. And then two, I want to remove a little bit of this color cast on the silver over here to be more silvery. And let's see what else. Maybe add a little bit more contrast to the can and take away some contrast from the background. So let's get on doing that. The first thing I will do is let's just make a selection of this. Actually, you know what? We don't need to make a selection of the white part. Let's just go into selective color. And here I am going to select my whites because this part is, has a lot of whites. And if I just desaturate this um, all the way to 100, I'll take the cyan to negative 100, magenta negative 100, and yellow negative 100. So now we remove all the color from that white and it will appear brighter. You see, this is the before and after, before and after. Now we did it a little bit too far because now we're losing a little bit of detail here on the right. So I can just take the opacity of this layer to maybe around 70 and that will give us a good result. Again, this is the before, this is the after. We took care of that white part. Let's take care of this silver part over here. So I'll go back to my image. I'm going to zoom in and make a selection of the silver parts. So for that, I will be using the Curvature Pen tool and just zip it is up, we'll go around the can. Try to be as accurate as you can. If you have to be less accurate, then stay into the silver part. Don't go into the pink can part because it will look weird if part of the pink can is completely desaturated. But if you have a little bit of color cast on the silver part, it's not too bad. So let's see. I'm just going to try to do this quick. It's not going to be perfect. But there you go. I'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter um, according to the analytics and to the YouTube. Only like 20% of you guys or so are watching till the end of the video. So I'm assuming my videos are too long and I'm trying to make them shorter. So let's see. Also, if you do not want to see the editing parts, just let me know in the comments and I don't need to include this. All right, now I'm closing this path. I'm going to adjust this point really quick. Right click on it, make selection. You see me guys did this a thousand times. Feather radius, I'll keep it at one. Click OK, then I'll go to select and inverse. And now we have a selection of this silver part, Command zero to fit to screen. And with this selection still active, you see those are marching ends. I will go over here in adjustment layers and I'll create a hue saturation adjustment layer and take the saturation down to negative 100. And you see how that's silver now, it's really silver. So this is the before, this is the after. If you don't like it that silvery, you can always take the opacity down. So, you know, you can make it 65%, let's say. So we took care of the white, we took part care of the silver. Now I want to add a little bit more contrast to my drink and I want to take away some contrast from the background. So in order to do that, first we have to make a selection of the can. 
Now, in order to make this video shorter, I'm not going to bore you with the selection. I'm just going to use the quick object selection. This is not the best tool to use. It's not very accurate, but I will use it in order to make this video shorter. So you see, we have a selection. Let's pretend it's good enough. And I am going to put this on. Let's see. I'm going to make an adjustment layer with this selection and I'm going to do the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Okay, here I just want to increase the contrast because I want to increase the contrast into the can. Not too much. I don't want it to look too ridiculous. My computer is going slow because I have Final Cut Pro doing some work in the background. So there you go. Let's see. This is the before and this is after. We just added a little bit of contrast. Again, this is the before, this is the after. Great. Now let's take some of the contrast away from the background. To do so, I will make a curve adjustment layer and I'm just going to lift the blacks. So let's see, just lift them up. I don't want to be too faded, just a little bit. My computer is really freaking out. Something like that. But now I don't want to take the contrast away from my um, can as well. So I need to put a mask. I will delete this mask over here because I do not need it. Just say delete. And I will drag, hold down option, drag this can mask to my curves layer. But now I am taking away contrast from the can. So I need to invert it. To invert it, command I, and that will make it into a black can. That means we are not applying this uh, black lifting to the can. So this is the before, this is the after, before and after. And I think that just looks a little bit more natural. Now, when I took these photos, I did mention that we'll change the color of the background. But looking at it now, it looks pretty close. Let's see. If you click on your swatch colors over here and then with your B for the brush, if you hold down option and take a sample of your can, you see the hue, it's 356. And then if I take a sample of the background, it's 355. So it's pretty much almost identical on the hue. Now the saturation on the background, as you can see over here, it's 67 and the can is 78. That is good. I wanted to have more saturation on my can. And then the brightness on the can is 61 and the midtones here on the background is 57. And that is looking all good to me. I wanted to, the way you separate a product from the background, there's three ways to do it. And one is by light, the brightness, like, um, you know, your eye will naturally go towards the brightest part of the image. Then there is color. If you see something that's very colorful, your eye would go to that. And then contrast. So that's why I wanted my drink to have more contrast at the background. So I'll cancel out of that. And then the other thing I need to do is kind of straighten my image a little bit. So I will go into curves. I will crop it in just a little bit and let's see, I'm going to move it to kind of center it on the image. And then I'm looking here on the shelf. I want to make sure that is straight and I need to tilt it a little bit, something like that. And click OK to accept the change. And this is pretty much our final image. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in the next video.